have spoke a lot about, you know, fear and dealing with fear, anxiety and dealing with anxiety. And, you know, both of those two things are kind of an indication or often an indication of what you're resisting or that you are in fact resisting something. And, you know, when you go back to what you started with is talking about flow and where is the flow and where have you lost flow in your life, in your business, in your career, your relationships for uh, perhaps. And so the question then becomes, are you even aware? So in this particular conversation today, some of you may be thinking, okay, where does this apply? How do I apply this? The question sometimes is just is what am I resisting? Now, You've had this conversation with your athletes many times. I think you shared a couple of different stories about one of the questions you ask them when you're having discussions with them about what they're bumping up against or where they're not training well, performing well. Maybe they came off a competition. Maybe they're just not jiving. They can't seem to get it together. One of your questions is, what are you resisting? And I think that's always a great question because we think it's always outside of us and we're looking at all of the excuses. That's our kind of our go-to is that it must be outside circumstances. It's like, it's the economy, you know, in your athlete's case, it's, you know, my skates, it's the ice conditions, it's my partner, you know, whatever it might be. But if we just step back for a little bit and say, in amongst all of those excuses, what am I resisting? So I don't know if you can give us a little bit of an example, perhaps of where you see it and have worked with it with your athletes. Yeah, that's a really good point. I think the biggest thing is when I'm bumping up into a, a goal, for example, the bigger the goal, the bigger the resistance. That's what happens. It's like there's this automatic universal law around pushback and resistance is that when you set a goal, it's about who you have to become to get that goal. But if you've never done something outside of what you already know, there ha there's an automatic resistance that happens. So when I ask the question, you say you want the goal, you say you're ready to commit, you say you're ready to do the work, do what it takes to get there. And then things show up to test you. So what are you resisting? Are you resisting wanting the goal? Are you resisting who you have to become to get the goal? Are you resisting the challenge, the hard work, you know, the, the sweat, the blood, the tears that goes with it, maybe another form of sacrifice, something else you have to give up or something you have to do in order to get that. So there's that resistance, that, that overcoming inertia that has to happen in order to step into the next level of what you say you want. And that's what I love about what I call the champion's journey is that what resistance shows up is also what you need to evolve or involve. So it's what you resist persists, but what you involve dissolves. So yeah. it softens the conversation when you can involve the conversation, what it is that you're resisting. Let's talk about it. Let's chat about what you're resisting. Let's involve it into the plan. Let's bring it in. So the evolution of you as a human being first and an athlete second or a business person, but as a human being gets to go on that ev evolutionary journey to the to to somewhere you've never been before because the future is unknown for all of us so that's part of resistance so what you resist persists but what you involve dissolves so good when you kind of break it down that way because here's something that i think is from a coaching aspect and and a self-discovery aspect you know when we talk about shift so our coaching program shifts setting honest intentions for transformation which is really about self-reflection and looking at what it is that gets in your way because it's always you, you know, at the end of the day, it has to land with you in terms of what you're challenged with in terms of achieving the goals or the outcomes, whatever they might be. And the goals and outcomes we're talking about here may, may not have anything to do with careers, business, money. It could be totally just about great relationships, great family relationships, great friendships, whatever, uh, else there is out there. There's a lot of things that we try and achieve and we set goals for physical, mental, all of those things, all seven areas of our life. But here's the thing about resistance. When you start to shine a light on it differently, you draw back from the excuses and you start to unpack what the resistance is. And often you're going to find out that it goes to the age old, uh, the resistance and the fear of being judged. You're resisting being judged. You're resisting being wrong or being considered wrong or being accused of being wrong or being told you're wrong. You know, there's all of these ego protecting itself again. And 
you want to stick with what you know. And so you're resisting going to something new where you're going to put yourself out there. Now, we've had this conversation ourselves. I think on the show, even we've shone a light on it. Like, it's really tough to, I think it was with you. I don't know. I was so many podcasts, but you put yourself out there. You know, we go on YouTube, we go on these audio, we put our kind of views of the world out there and it's out there for people to judge. And, you know, you have to get over that. You have to let it go. And we've certainly done that, but there's always that little niggly, like, okay, how far do we push this envelope? What do we say? What do we don't say? Because why? There's a resistance to being judged, to putting yourself out there and risking, I don't know, perhaps reputation, what you think people think of you. I mean, there's all those things that go on with the mental aspect of resistance. So the point of that is to say, okay, if you're feeling that and you're not moving forward or there's something in your way and you're making excuses, what are you resisting? Probably is a great question. What do you think? What are you resisting? But I don't know if many people actually ask themselves that question as part of their goal setting or as part of what's going on. And the term we use sometimes is that things are getting really sticky. It's really sticky. I need, I need to figure out what it is that I'm resisting or what I'm not communicating around clearly. And when you think about resistance and about what are you doing to get in your own way to get your goals, it also lands as a giant excuse just to stay put. And that way you're not going to get judged. You're not going to get hurt. You're not going to have to look at what you're doing right or wrong. You just get to sit in that level of comfort. And when you know, when, until you're willing, and the keyword is willing to move through the resistance, I think, and be uncomfortable, actually being comfortable, being uncomfortable. That's what I've gotten to in my life is that I'm really uncomfortable when I'm comfortable but I'm much more comfortable when I'm in discomfort, which means I'm moving through resistance or I'm moving through the things that are putting up the, the blocks that are coming up in front of me, the, the curve balls, the things that are coming. And I don't feel like I have to surrender so harshly to the resistance and just stop cold. I can actually surrender to the vulnerability of not knowing and just dropping the resistance being kinder to myself, listening to myself talk and going, you know what, what am I defending? What, what do I not want to learn right now? What do I not want to hear right now? And just be softer, softer with myself, softer with the scenario, and then trying to, to navigate some through the resistance so that I can use the skills that I have around, you know, resilience and, and tenacity and adversity training, but not let that resistance or not let that charge of my body stop me from whatever, whatever that lesson is that I'm supposed to be learning. So when we look at resistance, you know, the thing I think we have to draw our attention to is just notice it. Sometimes just noticing it and you aren't really even aware that you're resisting something, or maybe you are aware and you don't know why you're uh, resisting it. So then ask yourself the question, what is it and why are you resisting it? And what's behind it? What's underneath the resistance, which is, you know, be cautious that it isn't that fear of judgment, that, you know, fear of putting yourself out there, for example, is it a risk? Do you just not want to change? You know, what is the resistance? And, you know, for example, if it's on a deal and you don't want to take the deal forward, Find out and just ask yourself why you're resisting it. And it could be just straight up. It's not a good deal. I'm resisting it because it doesn't feel like a good negotiation. I'm resisting it because I don't see that the risk reward is there. So when we look at that, number one, acknowledge it. That is always the first thing is to see or to have the awareness of that, in this case, resistance, and then break it down, lift the hood, go, what the heck is behind all of that? That's a really evolved way to uh, look at it, to get a sense of it. It will also take the edge off of it. If you've got some fear, if you've got some anxiety around it, if you've got some worry about it, it takes the edge off it because you're actually shining a light on it. And when you take and shine a light on it, it automatically takes the edge off. And sometimes that shining a light is just having a conversation, stating, stating it out loud with somebody that you're, uh, that you can have those conversations with. Uh, is a great way to do it. Just to dovetail on that is that when you think about when somebody asks you, what are you resisting? And you don't know what it is that you're even resisting or that you are resisting. Listen to the language. That's that's my thought was and I always listen. To, we've got some family members who you'd ask something and they start out with, well, well, you know, I don't know. You know, there's a couple of different lines that you can hear. I can hear when I'm talking to people about what they're going to pause or how they're going to delay any kind of decision making or having an opinion in how they initially respond to a question or an ask or something that you have. So notice if you're asking somebody for something or for them to do something, and they're like, well, 
I don't know, or that's kind of a big deal, or I'm not sure really what you mean. So in those moments, in those transitory moments in relationship or conversations, notice the relationship um, languaging that that person uses. And um, it's funny that I, I you know, we've <laughs> I've had conversations with people that will actually say, uh, no, they say, yeah, no, yeah, no. And they cancel it out right away. And to me, that's a clue. That's a clue that there's a resistance in there for something. Either they're not willing to work with you on something or they don't want to do something or they're just, I don't know, in some, in some cases, it's just a lazy pattern. Could be. It could be. The point of this is, you know, is to look at where, where it exists. What is it, what is it there for you? When you see it in others, you may, you may actually be able to be a little bit more investigative and ask and see if you can get underneath what it is for somebody else so that you can move them forward uh, into whatever conversation you're having. 